Right, greetings everyone and welcome to the second Sword of Unvalor. Uh, you know what, we're just going to call it SOC for simplicity's sake. And yeah, uh, so yesterday I made a video uh, that was very, very quick. Uh, mostly because the game just came out. I saw a few videos on my own that looked kind of interesting. So I, I downloaded the game and I thought it was pretty cute. So I, I thought I'd make a video potentially uh, introducing myself to the community and also, you know, declaring a little bit of intent of making some video like this. And I do want to do a pre or a reroll video as well. But as someone pointed out, hey, more research for the next video. So I have done the research. I am going to shout out Dog Punch from Gotcha Gaming subreddit, who made a wonderful, uh, like, long post about it. We're not going to do tier, tier lists uh, or anything like that quite yet. Um, this game has been out apparently about like six months in uh, Taiwan, I do believe it is. Now it's just starting to roll out to other countries. So, you know, uh, there is a little bit of free ahead that we can all look at. Uh, whether the game will exactly follow it, I would generally assume. But, you know, sometimes they don't want that. So we'll keep an eye on it. Anyway, it is a fantasy tactical RPG uh, that is a gotcha-based system. I talked a little bit about gotcha yesterday, but not too terribly much. To me, before you get too involved about gameplay or anything like that, gotcha is a lot of make or break to how good one of these games are. And so here's some things I've learned. So first off, weapon gotcha is something that I listed as a negative previously. The weapon gotcha, as far as I have researched, seems to be for whales only. You can grind out weapons, you can get weapons just in game so you don't need to i mean as the game goes on it could change it's you know always worth uh, remembering this kind of stuff but it does seem like weapon gotcha is not too terribly important uh second uh when it comes to overall like rainbow rates for my votive players uh, the best characters in the game the best characters in the game are considerably better than the lower tier units so that does make that kind of important however from what i've researched it seems like once you get a single character uh, a single copy of a character you're pretty much good because you can farm all the stuff needed to upgrade them and get their weapons uh, or weapons for them and everything like that. So it is not do or die. It is not the votive system where you need tons and tons of stuff and limited characters. You can't get the shard. It, it's not that. It does seem to be pretty friendly in that. However, the poll percent rate is not something I'm going to really shout out as being too positive. I mean, it is 2%, which is pretty low. Thankfully, though, there are some things to help players. First off, uh, for people who are curious, looks like you will get somewhere between events and logins around 30 to 50 polls per month, which is pretty good. That is generally pretty fun, uh, pretty fair in terms of a lot of gotcha games out there because they do need to make money. They're not charities. It's, but uh there is a spark system at 200 poles there are different types of banners such as debut banners like this one which basically focuses on the newest character primarily focusing an up rate for them only there's the destined banners which focus on up rates for two different characters there's the standard banner which isn't i think anything really special it's probably the one that you're not i mean you'll just get a random legendary most of the time so that might not be something and then there's the guaranteed banner uh which is the first summon banner the typical gotcha early on thing uh only 10 poles can be used here uh there is uh, a campaign right now where you get up to level 10, 20, 30, and they each give you 
uh, 30 poles. And also from what I can see, it's about 1500 of these gems to do a 10 pole. So right now, since I have one and we're, we need 1350 to complete it. So do that. You can do that. And then you have this little tarot card system, which is kind of cute. I don't, I haven't researched to see if this is just like a cosmetic thing. I would assume so, because otherwise, um, you know, but anyway, let's, let's try this. Let's try the moon one. So this color right here, the sparkly one means that you've gotten a guaranteed QR in here. It does come out one at a time. Regular characters will just show up like this. Slightly better characters uh, and the best kind of characters will get this kind of animation. And there is our guaranteed. I don't know how good that one is, but yeah, like we got one and we got basically like an SSR tier character there. So that's essentially what we got. I'm not going to be running this account probably too, too much because I'm working on one on my phone that I was doing some pre-rolling on. Um, but I was doing this banner and this banner because they have some of the better characters in the entire game uh, on Operate, which probably means that they are just... But yeah, uh, obtaining duplicate summons will give you shards for the characters. Basically more of a thing for whales since a basic player or free to play players can earn the shards in game and be generally okay by the sounds of it. All of that is just really, really nice. But if you are looking to get duplicates and get duplicates to speed up the character's growth and everything like that. Um, up characters or uprated characters do have a 50% chance to uh, obtain the legendary in question or best year of character. And yeah, for people who are wondering, I guess I'm just going a little bit, Gloria is a fantastic character yet. And both these two characters on the Destin banner are considered to be some of the higher tier ones and I think are still really good even in uh, the current version of the game that is further ahead. Taking a look at it, uh, important things to know about this game that I have also researched is that it is not an instant gratification game for the most part. I, I guess if you are spending a ton of money, you can probably get that instant gratification that you are looking for, but this is a generally slower paced game. Uh, stamina management is important. Uh, the stamina supply is about like 480 daily. Uh, farming takes about 230 according to Toecoin. I don't know if that's essentially true. That might be more optimized once you know what you're doing. You're probably going to waste some stamina in the early days, not knowing exactly what is best to do. Uh, resource maps uh, cost different amounts of stamina, daily bonuses, uh, providing good rewards and everything like that. So focus on grinding dust and stones, which doesn't mean too terribly much to you, uh, but that is essentially what is recommended. And campaign stages are 30 stamina initially, but can be replayed uh, without stamina once they are cleared. So that's pretty cool. Pacing of the game, I think I talked about this, gearing units and completing stages take time. Uh, building units is great for people who are diligent daily farming. Uh, only a few days to get a new unit to good standard. And then there's end game content, which seems pretty interesting in terms of for people who are looking for those for the grinds, such as carrots and the spirals of destinies, which is its own mode. It's a no gotcha roguelike game mode where players manage resources and it's apparently really, really interesting. If you go into here, the, these are the essentially modes. I think the orange one is the daily farm. The green one is the main story and the blue one 
is the Spirals of Destinies, which is early, but a no gotcha like mode in a gotcha is pretty neat and pretty unique. So yeah, I mean, there's also a bunch of other stuff in the game that I have not gotten into yet. Uh, some other really quick notes that I want to highlight. Uh, there are great free to play teams out there without incredibly hard to get characters. So that's great news for people who just don't want to deal with re-rolling and all of that and just kind of want to play and have fun and maybe get some cool characters along. Okay. Uh, the game has an auto battle. It's apparently incredibly bad. So if you're playing this game, you're probably just going to want to actually play it, which is something that is kind of generally good playing games to play games to have fun. Um, dupes needed? No. A single pull is everything you need, and you can farm a, a similar comparison to people who are really looking for just a comparison is Princess Connect. Princess Connect is a game out there where once you get the character, you can basically get the shards through one way or another to get the character to max. Of course, Princess Connect is a gotcha. It does need to make money, so of course there are financial ways of doing that. Same here, by the looks of them. So yeah, um, there's there's some other stuff. It looks like a pretty fun little game from the small amount of time. Again, I've only played two hours of this game, but I'm generally enjoying it. And the reroll for people who are also curious, because I will be doing a reroll video um, showing it off. For people who are wondering about reroll, I would say that the reroll takes somewhere between 10 and 20 minutes, which is pretty fast for a game like uh, gotcha games can have rerolls that potentially take a really long time but this one is generally pretty easy as you can just go in to here um i i don't recommend rerolling on the pc version just because the pc version doesn't have the account um like the guest account for and that is probably going to be a you know a sticking point so emulators if you're going the pc route uh the phone is also really good for re-rolling which is something i'll talk about a little bit later but yeah unbinding guest accounts is generally pretty easy. either way uh it seems like it's a generally good start to this game with lots of different stuff to do lots of content at the initial start and you know not something that necessarily rush down which is also pretty nice just because when it gets to rushing down stuff uh, it can be potentially not maybe so fun this did they appear Are they running around doesn't look like it hmm Anyway, uh, so that's all for this video. Hopefully this has been better informed. Again, shout out to the people who have been making guides and everything like that. Obviously piggybacking a little bit off of that, but when you don't know, you go and you do your read. But again, I'm only two hours in. Cut me, cut me just a bit of slack for now. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Enjoy, have a great day, and see you later.